So um, given the openness of the platform, uh, obviously um, anybody can come along and create an account. And, you know, uh, there has been some uh, disgruntledness within the, uh, within the uh, Democratic community saying that Nation Builder has uh, made itself available to conservative and Republican causes. And obviously given the open platform approach that you've created, and anybody can create an account, that makes perfect sense that if they saw the value of this tool, they would use it. But um, I think one of the things that people want to know is, you know, to what extent does my data, if I put my data in uh, on the back end of my nation builder, can any of your other clients access my data? Ah, so great question. Everybody, when they start their own nation on nation builder, uh, they have their, their own data. Um, and we don't own it in our terms of service. Just you own it, and that means you can export it, you can pull it out anytime. And kind of what we're trying to do here, and this is really important for you know anybody who thinks about technology, who thinks about how technology affects the relationship between you know government and, and citizens. What we're trying to do here is make this as egalitarian as possible. And so we're removing a lot of the you know a lot of the barriers to entry. Um, and part of that is saying, hey, you can use it whether you're conservative or progressive. Now, in the old school world where data was kept by a couple of very powerful people and used as a tool to, for them to wield their own preferences of that power, um, that kind of initially freaked people out. It was kind of funny, right? People said, oh, my God, everybody can use it. And then what people started to realize is that it's, you know, technology is not just about having tools. It's also about how you put it to work. You know, so you could have uh, an, an organization that you don't like, have the same technology as an organization as you do like, and then the organization that you do like, they've got to go out and do the work, right? And we actually want that to happen, right? We want the people who we like to actually use technology better than the folks who we disagree with. Uh, you know, we, if we think of how cell phones work, right, or how, or how Google works, you know, there are people that you agree with and disagree with, on cell phones, using Google, using, you know, any number of technologies, airplanes, cars, right? Technologies are always open. The question is, right, who uses it smarter and better? And so in a way, it's kind of an organizing challenge uh, that, that we've laid out. We said, hey, look, we're going to put something better than you have on the market. Now go work and figure it out, and as a result, engage your community better, too. Uh, I think that's really, really uh, a, a key point to make, and uh, uh, thanks for, for clearing that up. Uh, I want to uh, kind of finalize, and because and, you know we're all about uh, empowering or enabling our audience to be able to take the information they're learning from us, from the news in general, uh, from politicians, and to be able to uh, take action on it. And um, you know, oftentimes we focus on what they can do as individuals. Uh, but Nation Builder really provides an opportunity for people to create a campaign website that starts to organize and mobilize other people to support the goals that they themselves are pushing forward. Uh, so if you could talk a little bit, a uh, little bit more about, you know, what the social media links between Nation Builder uh, and out to Twitter and Facebook, how that works, you know, wh wh what are some of the, the neat features that people would be able to use on Nation Builder? Yes, absolutely. So I'll give an example, and um, you know I'm glad you brought up the website. If you know we're in LA, so if you look at Eric Garcetti's website for mayor, you'll see down at the bottom, you know, uh, created with Nation Builder. If you um, you know are on the East Coast and you're looking at you know key stuff like maybe Cory Booker's race, you'll see created with Nation Builder. And um, so there's a whole bunch of, of uh, you know online efforts being propped up uh, uh, on our our system, and um, you know the reason is. But once that what we've fundamentally done is say, hey, data and your front-facing engagement are not different things. They're not separate things. So um, when when you sign up for Nation Builder, we'll actually give you uh, a, a whole set of templates of really nice professional sites that you could prop up with no HTML experience whatsoever. Now, if you wanted to hire a designer, you could create the real cool, fancy stuff that other folks have built too. Um, but you, knowing nothing, can actually set up a website that syncs seamlessly to social media. So when somebody goes on, they can log in through their Facebook, log in through their Twitter, you know, the same kind of user experience that people have using Amazon or Pinterest or Shopify, 
uh, that for some reason we're not giving them in the space of creating change and politics. Um, so we're changing that. That, that. What that does is help us capture lots of people's information. In addition, yep. you're getting about 30 different types of ways to engage people, from events to surveys to petitions. They're all synced seamlessly to social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, CloudSource. Well, Michael, it's David Schuster here. we got to wrap it there because we're about to hit a break. But I wanted to thank you and Alan Rosenblatt, a terrific social media segment. Michael Michella, Vice President of Organizing at Nation Builder. You can follow him on Twitter, at Mike Michella. And Alan Rosenblatt, our social media guru. You can follow him at, at Dr. Digipol. Terrific segment. Activist of the Week is next right here on Take Action News. <laughs> 